Station F-20. This will be the first entry of three in a series discussing main points that are in the Kingdom Hearts universe. The other two topics, if you missed my previous video, will be about sleeping worlds and world lines. I do want to point out just a slight anecdote that all three of these topics share a common ground, that of having to do with the world. In this video, we will be trying to gather all the information in the Kingdom Hearts universe about datascapes. One thing before we begin, I will do my best to present these topics without any kind of speculation. At the end of these, I will be inserting some of my own ideas, but I will make very clear that they are more of an interpretation of the facts I've laid out. Now, I am far from perfect when it comes to gleaning every detail, so if I do miss anything, please let me know by leaving a comment. I am hoping to release this before Remind, so after my other videos, I may revisit to make an addendum to this one and the others if needed. I also have a special guest joining me for this video, Demo279, who will be helping me present this concept. Hey there guys, how's it going? My name's Damo, and I'm really honored to be invited by WaterKH to talk a little bit about Datascapes, a really fascinating topic that I've dived into a little bit myself, but nothing compared to what WaterKH has done. Finally, if you're not subscribed, it would be awesome if you could do that for me, as I have a lot of theories I plan on doing that I'm hoping will not take as long as this one. Anyways, let's begin. Firstly, what is a Datascape? If you're unfamiliar with the series, or maybe just play the main titles, this may be something you know very little about, if at all. In Kingdom Hearts 2, the introduction to this idea of datascapes left many confused, myself included when I was a kid playing this game for the first time. We see time stopping, these weird static overlays, something is obviously very wrong with this world. This would be many's first encounter with datascapes, at least consciously. From this, the conclusion that computers and datascapes go hand in hand. For instance, Roxas' part of this game all takes place inside of a datascape, in a digital environment created by Ansem the Wise. Another digital environment we visit, this time as Sora, is Tron's world. Actually, if we look more at Ansem the Wise's research and creations, we can see that it was very centered around this notion of digital data. Moving on, in Kingdom Hearts 3, it kind of doubles down on this notion of digital data, as we see some of the story in Kingdom Hearts 3 revolving around recovering Roxas' memories that were used to create the datascape mentioned above that apparently were still in storage on Ansem the Wise's computer. We also get more confirmation of this when the replica Riku asks if they stole their idea when recreating a heart from Data in Big Hero 6's world, indicating that they do have this ability, or at least theory, that digital data, that were the memories of Roxas, can be used to restore a heart. Now, from this initial breakdown of just this, we could identify some characteristics of datascapes. However, I would like to lay some more groundwork before continuing. In Kingdom Hearts Coded, or Recoded, the entire game is centered around digitizing Jiminy's journal. This game was originally released on mobile in 2008, and I believe it's pretty similar to the DS port, although this essay will be using the DS port to draw on some characteristics of datascapes. Now referring back to the point about digitizing Jiminy's journal, this gives us a potentially obscure fact about datascapes. It's anything that is recorded, whether by keyboard or hand. What do I mean by this? Well, let's start with the simplest, Jiminy's journal. I say simplest, but really I mean the one with the most information about it laced within the story of Recoded. The whole reason of digitizing this book is because the entire journey was mysteriously deleted and replaced with the iconic lines left by Naminé. According to Chip and Dale, the book contains worlds even if that written data explaining those have been removed. They simply have to have existed at one point. So it seems more so that the pages are the display, and the book has its own internal recording. This would be close to being right, however, something from Kingdom Hearts, the original game, actually sheds more light on this phenomenon. This isn't the only book that would seemingly function this way. Winnie the Pooh's world is also contained within a picture book. The only way to go through this world's story is to gather piece by piece the missing data fragments, or pages. This would then indicate that a book's pages then hold data, or rather, memory. Now I'd like to sidetrack this conversation to get a little bit more technical, because I think it's a good example. So if we think of these pages as the display, and the content of the pages as the data, and the book as the computer, then we can draw some interesting parallels. For instance, when Sora meets the owl, it says some of the pages are missing, so we can't tell him what's going to happen next. So the program, the book, is aware that there is an overall structure or method it's trying to call, but the reference isn't there. It doesn't know what to display or calculate next, since its pages, the display, and the content of the pages, the data, or rather the code, 
isn't part of the program. This is further backed up with Kingdom Hearts 2's similar Collect the Pages, Win of the Pooh world, except this time the pages also act as a different part of the book's data, memory. The more you collect, the more the program is able to reference and point to the correct methods to call for the story to continue and the memory to be restored. From this explanation, even though the book's pages may be missing the physical displayed contents, the page itself contains the data, the memory of what was written to it, and if able to be accessed, whether digitally or physically, as both Mickey and Sora show respectively, those worlds can be traversed just as Sora traversed Winnie the Pooh's world. Another book we have seen is the Book of Prophecies, which has been confirmed in Kingdom Hearts Union Cross to have the ability to project datascapes of the recorded events inside of it. Not only is it able to display these worlds, it has the ability to manifest objects, like the metals we use in the game. This is further corroborated by the events in Kingdom Hearts 2 when Sora pulls out the money pouch and the blue orb, and in Kingdom Hearts 3 when they compare the photographs. Also, we can see Sora using the keychain he received from his encounters with Pooh. Seeing as the shooting star is canon in Kingdom Hearts 3, this means that the keyblade Sora uses must be canon as well. The pages of the book then act like the book's visible character, what the outside world sees. While we can extend this idea of a book to a human, a body would be synonymous with the display function of that of a page. The contents of the page, the data, would be the memory, and the book itself would be the heart. And if we can compare effectively that of a book with a human, then if a book and a program can be coupled, then this analogy can then extend to a program and a human. The display would be the body, the data would be the memory, and the program would be the heart. May your heart be your guiding key. If the heart is the program, then this line can be read in the context essentially reading, may your program guide you. This may sound crazy, but with examples and evidence I'm about to give, this seems to make sense. The main premises of Chain of Memories were that you could contain memories that were not your own, memories could be overwritten, and memories could create or project a world. It's interesting that Xemnas makes a callback to this very fact in the Dream Drop Distance, asking Sora how he knows his memories are his own. But this will go back to the statement I made about humans being like programs in Kingdom Hearts. Memories are like data. They are being pointed to or intrigued by the heart or the program, and they are reminded essentially even if their memory isn't their own. The next point is perfectly portrayed in Chain of Memories. Sora and Replica Riku both have their memories overwritten like data. This even goes so far as to literally change objects in the real world, or at least their perception of it. This perception gimmick is seen as well in the newest Remind trailer, when Aqua sees the waves of her dark self and Sora seeing shadows. It is also seen with Sora being mistaken for Yozora. And Datasaur also has these odd perception bugs when he enters keyholes and recoded. Finally, these cards created from Sora's memories are then used to create worlds, at least in Marluxia's words, but we'll discuss this later. An interesting anecdote is that the cards used in Castle Oblivion are literally memory cards by nature. They are cards that were made from Sora and Riku's memories, which is another reference to memory being similar to data. And if these memory cards are in fact just physical representations of memories, or in other words, data, then these worlds created from it are perhaps some kind of datascape. They would be using similar technology, I would argue, that Roxas' datascape was made from, although it is unclear if those events already happened and he is simply reliving them. But we do know that Roxas' memories are near perfectly intact, according to Enzo in Secret Report 9. We will explore this idea of differing versions of datascapes a bit further along in the video. To end this slight detour with some slight speculation, when nobody is created, they take on the form of their somebody, or rather, their display. Their memory is also transferred to that display, held in memory if you will. That display has no program to run it, but it does generate one as it goes on. We can see this physically display with Roxas, how dead his eyes look, the autonomy of simply being told what it is he should do, as well as with Ventus after his heart, or his program, was divided. The same dead eyes look is reflected. During this period, Sora's heart lends some of its function to him to make his program whole again, although he does take some time to acclimate to the change. A uh, stretch, but I would say it's interesting. So we have evidence that datascapes can be represented by a book, like Winnie the Pooh, and by a computer, like with the case of Roxas. Well, what is a datascape then really? Winnie the Pooh's book is considered a world in the Kingdom Hearts universe, as is the Data Twilight Town. Thus, a datascape, even though created, is still referred to as a world in the Kingdom Hearts universe, and if a datascape is a world, then it has a heart. But we will explore this later with more evidence. Continuing on to our next point to make about datascapes, we see a rather unusual phenomenon. The idea of copying a consciousness into a transferable or data encapsulated unit has been an idea for a while at this point. However, Kingdom Hearts seems to take Tron's approach to this kind of take on it, wherein the player is completely decompiled and recompiled in the data world. Again, the first conscious time this seems to be done was with Tron's world in Kingdom Hearts 2, as we see Sora and his crew literally scanned and then converted into these blocks and sucked into the datascape. Even though they are shown being transported, they themselves don't seem to be aware of this fact, which leads into our next point. 
What else does Recoded tell us about the data world? Well, a very interesting property of being in a datascape, or a world of data, is the fact that you can be unaware that you are in a datascape. This is showcased many times in the Kingdom Hearts universe, not just Recoded. We see this clearly though in Recoded as Mickey and company are sucked in without even them or the players noticing. Also in Kingdom Hearts 2, with Roxas and Data Twilight Town, the whole of Kingdom Hearts Union Cross Dandelions, including the leaders, and Sora in Kingdom Hearts 2 when he initially goes to Tron's world, and in Kingdom Hearts 3 when he is jettisoned into Varum Rex's video game. On a quick side note, it seems that Kingdom Hearts Key itself may be a datascape. Talking to Water, I made something of a discovery where, when Arva is speaking with the Dandelions in Kingdom Hearts Key and Union Cross, it shows Skull within the crowd. However, in the Kingdom Hearts Key back cover telling of this, she is not present. Also, another thing to point out is that Ira's eyes in Kingdom Hearts Key and Union Cross are yellow, but in back cover they are red. Anyways, since the entirety of that person is sucked into the computer, this means their heart, as well, is able to be digitized. Yanzo states that this shouldn't be possible in an excerpt from Secret Reports 9. However, if this weren't possible, how could Sora exist within a datascape? You may also ask, but what about Dream Drop Distance's cutscene where Xemnas states data does not have a heart with which to parse that data? But this is shown in Kingdom Hearts 3 matter-of-factly to be not the case. But before we leave off this point, I want to move on to another main point, that data can have hearts. Since Sora was completely decompiled and then recompiled inside the datascape, this would hold some credence that he retained his heart during the process. If he were to have left his heart behind during this process, that heart would be up for grabs without any container. It's also interesting what Ansem the Wise says about his research regarding this. The inhabitants of Data Twilight Town were constructed from real hearts, but he does say that they are in fact Data. This is obvious from the fact that there exists there another Hater, Pence, and Alette when we see the original ones in the actual Twilight Town. However, Roxas here does seem to be physically here. A heart and a container within these people made from Data, with no hearts. This would seemingly contradict what Ansem the Wise states at the end of Kingdom Hearts 2 when he says, The process of encoding hearts is incalculable. A heart is so much more than any system. All the more proof that hearts cannot be contained by data. But what's interesting here is that he researched all of this, but even at this somber moment, he still isn't saying it's impossible. And I think we see that it is in fact possible. In all of these statements, he never once says it's impossible. This is subtle, but also a fact. It is incalculable. It is more than a system, and it can't be contained. However, this does mean that it is possible for a heart to exist within data. The process just seems to be intricate and expensive. From a previous video, I did make arguments for why data could have hearts, so if you haven't seen that video, I'd recommend at least watching that small part where I explain that. But I think there's more evidence for that as well to build on top of what I've already stated. To explain briefly, Mickey states that the Keyblade's power comes from the wielder's strength of heart. Since Datasaur's Keyblade was destroyed, and then he was able to summon an actual real Keyblade in the datascape, this was evidence to say that Data can in fact grow hearts, much like nobody's can, which I also explained in that video. This isn't the only fact we have about Data being able to have hearts. Even though Anson the Wise states that Data cannot contain a heart, he says it more like there's evidence to the contrary of this fact. I find it weird that he says this, but he is the one that created both the Data Twilight Town that housed Roxas, who indeed does have a heart, and the Master Program, a machine that copied Sora and his gang into the machine. More evidence that Data can have a heart is from the Big Hero 6 world in Kingdom Hearts 3, where the Dark Riku replica basically states that Data can learn how to act like a heart, or rather they can create a heart from Data, or, from what we've discussed, memories. And when this is completed, he says that the Data contains a complete heart from interacting with and fighting against Sora, learning and writing to Data what it learns. In Winnie the Pooh's Datascape, Sora tells Pooh that he'll always be in his heart in Kingdom Hearts 3. With Kingdom Hearts 2, we see the slow progression of Tron seemingly grow his heart, Varum Rex also gives more evidence for this, or rather, Yozora. We see that Yozora comes from a video game, however, in the latest Remind trailer, we definitely see him interacting with Sora in a version of the final world, seeing as the only difference is the passage of time since it is nighttime here. The final world is for those who have lost their heart and body at once, but are still being held onto by someone that still has theirs. This lends more evidence for Data being able to retain their hearts. So if a heart can indeed exist in the datascape, then this means that a heart can be transferred into the datascape like we see in Kingdom Hearts 2 with Tron's world. We can also apply that same logic to books and other datascapes. At this point, the question does seem to come to the forefront of my mind. Is there a difference between people that were made from data as opposed to those who were simply transferred with their hearts? Datascapes can encode hearts as well as create hearts. Then is there really any difference between a copy of a person and the actual person? I would compare this with the replica program as well as nobody's. They are created from the memories of others, however they are able to generate their own hearts. This is really shown with Replica Riku. He was a puppet at first, made with the memories of Riku, 
but then they changed his memory to think he was Riku, and then by the end he became his own person. We also see how Sora and Data Sora are two separate entities, but Mickey mentions that any sword created from Data is Sora. We kind of see how these relate later in this video, like how Hainer, Pence, and Alette take the same picture, even though really the only reason they took the picture was because Roxas was with them. With the Dark Baymax story, we see that they were trying to say they can create a heart completely out of Data, meaning Data has the ability to possess a heart. However, I would postulate that this segregates things into two categories, artificial and reality. We've seen this a lot actually in Kingdom Hearts as well. We have obviously the topic we are discussing, Data, where Sora has his own heart, but then the data made from Jiminy's journal at the end of Recoded also generates a heart that is different to Sora's personal heart. But when Sora is digitized, his heart is still his own heart, even when he has been reduced to data. Thus, is it then possible for there to be millions of Sora's created from data, each with their own heart? At this point, who's to say Sora is actually Sora? And I think the Remind trailer really captures this when Yozora is saying the same words as Sora at the beginning of Kingdom Hearts. Another real versus artificial instance is when nobodies grow their own hearts. Roxas and Sora should be a nobody and a somebody pair. However, the process of returning a heartless and nobody back to a complete person was short-circuited by Kari when she brought Sora back. Thus, Roxas is able to exist while Sora does. He is able to grow a heart as is every other nobody in Organization 13, even Shion, which leads to another topic of discussion, the replica program. It is honestly such a massive subject, though it is usually hidden behind the much larger plot points in Kingdom Hearts. With the replica program, it's essentially an artificial nobody. And what is a nobody, really? Just an empty husk that has the memories of their somebody. So Vexen was able to replicate this with his experiment, Shion. In Days' secret reports, Vexen questions whether his replicas could be classified as a special kind of nobody. With Shion as an empty puppet, they funneled data, or memories, into her from Sora until she was able to grow a heart of her own. The replicas soon evolved into a conduit of sorts able to have a heart placed into the body, and the body acting only as a vessel rather than a database. Finally, we have the organization's initial goal, creating an artificial kingdom hearts from the hearts collected by Roxas and Xion. So what I think Namor is doing with all these things, and moving back specifically to datascapes, is blurring the line between reality and artificial. When a character is sucked into the datascape, they literally do not even realize it. They could then live their entire lives being unaware of the fact that they have been digitized. Also, once a person has been scanned, the data still exists in the datascape. What I mean is that Roxas's memories exist in the computer in the old mansion, even though his heart is in Sora's body and his body is seemingly nowhere to be seen. We also see this kind of scanning being used by Vexen in his data fight, which also brings up data fights. The way these battles are presented is with this computer in the center with the turn on prompt. Once activated, these keyhole-shaped doors appear, which upon entering summons a battle with an organization member. The spawn for these members are shown to be the exact same as in Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, when you battle in PvP, and the org members as well. Which means that we are entering a datascape and are unaware of this fact when we are fighting these members. This is a tricky subject, and we'll be close to the last before we wrap things up since it will be a good segue into the next chapter of the series. Before we touch on the subject that datascapes are worlds, we see this phenomenon with Winnie the Pooh's world as well as Tron's and Roxas's. Well if a datascape is a world, all worlds have a heart, then that means that when a datascape world is overcome by darkness or on the brink of destruction, that world will act just like a normal one and fall asleep. Thus, while the grid in Dream Drop Distance is in fact a datascape, it is also a sleeping world, and thus has the ability to be populated by Dream Eaters. But Young Xehanort states that we are in the real world. So is there some ability for Dream Eaters to exist in a real world datascape? You see, in Kingdom Hearts 2, Tron talks about his original world being deleted, and it is confirmed that this original world is in fact the grid. Maleficent also confirms this as well when she mentions that if Sora had stayed in the datascape that was erasing, Sora would have been sent to eternal slumber. Thus, this datascape is in fact a sleeping world. Just like Xemnas states, data cannot have hearts. I believe young Xehanort is trying to mislead the player by stating that they are in the real world when in reality they are not. This still leaves Chirithes and Spirits in Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, but that will be saved for the sleeping world discussion. So now that we have given all these attributes of what constitutes a datascape, let's dive into some peculiarities when lining it up against the real world. Datascapes are a type of fake reality. It's a copy of the real world, or it's a simulation based off of memories or data. There is to be made a comment on what are known as projections and datascapes before we continue. 
In Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, they are very specific when they mention the worlds that we visit in Kingdom Hearts Key are projections created from the Book of Prophecies. Well, the Book of Prophecies has the ability to conjure up these worlds as well as create objects such as cards and medals. These memory cards are said to be created from the future, but at their core, I would argue that these cards are created from data. If we essentially equate data and memory, then the cards given to Sora in Chain of Memories are essentially the same as these cards given to the player in Kingdom Hearts Key. In this sense then, if the Book of Prophecies creates projections, the cards in Chain of Memories would cause the same kind of phenomenon to happen. Malusha states a new world would be made, but I would say this is more of a phrase than actual meaning. And Diz semi confirms this as he states that these rooms are shifted in response to these cards, rather than Sora entering an entirely new world. This is very important. I believe Chain of Memories is more of a projection rather than each card creating a datascape. With a datascape, it is more of an encapsulated world within the Kingdom Hearts universe, whereas Chain of Memories is simply rearranging the world to accommodate the memory. I think this is further illustrated by Recoded, where you literally only see pictures on the wall and the room just kind of shifts around. This kind of picture does have some relevance to datascapes, where we see Pete encircled by a bunch of similar looking windows, and in Kingdom Hearts 3, where these memories are seen stored in these mirrors. What's interesting with Kingdom Hearts 3 is that this mirror can be seen as you go through it to become Kingdom Hearts 2 Sora, which could give us an idea of how these mirrors work in the Station of Awakening. But I digress. If these cards and the Book of Prophecies power are one of the same, we can see how tricky perception becomes. This kind of mind manipulation is seen as stated above with Aqua, Sora, and Data Sora. This shows, though, how closely knit data scapes and projections are. Both use memories or data to fabricate the reality. It is hard to really tell, though, if they are separate or just different pieces of the same idea. Continuing, we will start with Twilight Town and Data Twilight Town. We find Hainer, Pence, and Olette having the exact same picture. The only thing missing is Roxas. How is this explained? Diz mentions that he copied the world into Sora's memories for Roxas to come to terms with who he was and then merge back with Sora. But this world duplicate seems much more closely knit to the real world rather than just a simulation. In 358 over 2 days, we see Pence collecting data on the wonders of Twilight Town, and in Kingdom Hearts 3 they talk about the white creatures or nobodies. So even though these worlds are running with a different variable, the inclusion of Roxas, the same events seem to pass. Another thing to note, which I'll probably talk about in a different video concerning time, is the fact that this seems to still be before school started, since Alette seems to mention the school project that they worked on in summer. But that aside, another interesting thing to note is that Hainer recognizes the name Roxas, but this version of him doesn't know Roxas. The same kind of thing happens with Sora from Recoded. He hasn't met Donald or Goofy, but he feels a connection with them regardless. Another thing in this same vein is in the grid, when Sora reaches for Tron's hand and Tron reaches back. This version of Tron would have been created even before he had met Sora, but it seems to be that Tron remembers Sora. So even though these datascapes have their own people with their own hearts, and this datascape itself has its own heart, there is still this odd hidden connection to the real world and events that seem counterintuitive. I would argue that everything given above is based on facts given by the game, so straying a little away from that, I'm now going to present a theory. This isn't the main focus of the video though, but it is a little segment I wanted to add at the end since I think it's interesting. I think there is evidence to say that the Kingdom Hearts universe itself is inside a datascape. Think of the characteristics that we've come up with for datascapes. The residents of these worlds have the ability to grow or possess a heart, and most importantly, they don't recognize they are in a datascape. This fact that Nomura has suddenly inserted means that really, we have no way of knowing when we are or are not in a datascape. Here are some things that seem to indicate we are in fact in a datascape though. Datascapes seem to be prefaced with this bright light. In Recoded, the screen emits this bright light before Mickey and company are sucked in. In Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, there is this big glow when you are taken by Ephemer, as well as in the very beginning when you exit your Station of Awakening. And there are other moments that use this bright light. I'm not saying it always means we are traveling to a datascape, but we can never know if we are or are not. Also in Kingdom Hearts Union Cross are these gateways that the player uses to move between the projections within the datascape which seems oddly close to these portals Sora makes in Kingdom Hearts 3 to travel in the gummy ship. A function of data in computing, at least, is the ability to transfer memory. Memory in Kingdom Hearts functions very much like data. They are able to be rewritten, overwritten, replaced, and they seem to be transferable as well. All of these are presented in Chain of Memories as well. We see Sora's memory start being rewritten, then completely overwritten by Naminé in place of Kairi. The memory of Replica Riku is also seen to be manipulated and replaced by the real memories of Riku. Finally, this transfer is seen in Dream Drop Distance, where Roxas is seen holding Sora's hands while Sora is being dumped all these memories. 
Also, his ability to store multiple hearts is another function of data. If the heart is mostly the program, it's possible to store multiple programs within one computer, so to speak. Focusing on Roxas a bit, when he seems to recall things, his memories are signified by static, which is an odd thing artistically to do unless they were trying to do this intentionally. We are told this in Roxas' journal, Entry 52. We see this several times in days, like when Aladdin is talking to Abu at the end of the mission, Sora is seen in the static on the lower screen in Mission 16, or at the beginning of Mission 21. The big thing too is the perception of things in the Kingdom Hearts universe. Like I've stated above, we've seen these kind of weird perception oddities within the Kingdom Hearts universe, but this kind of altered perception is at the forefront of Recoded, mainly when you enter a keyhole, oddly enough. For instance, Sora will say I feel flat when entering Traverse Town's keyhole. We also see this 2D kind of gameplay in Wind of the Pooh's world. This alter reality is also seen when Sora magically changes form as well to fit each world. Well, if Sora is able to enter a datascape, but he's already in a datascape, is this possible? Well, Recoded also demonstrates this fact when Sora enters Riku, which is a copy of Jiminy's journal, thus another datascape. So, Data Sora would have been in a datascape and then would have been able to travel inside another datascape. This would also make sense why Sora is able to travel into deeper datascapes if he already is data. Also in Recoded, we see Time Stop in Aladdin's world, just like in Roxas's and Pooh's world, which makes sense if they are both datascapes. We see the same kind of effect though in Pooh's world as in the Birth by Sleep's secret ending cutscene. I will probably talk more about this in my time video though. In Recoded again, Mickey is seen talking to Sora as if from some higher presence, just like Sora is talked to in the intros of Kingdom Hearts. And I will end on these last two thoughts. In Toy Box, we see NT Decidia. For those unaware of this game, it is basically a game that features other Final Fantasy characters. Sound familiar? They would honestly potentially maybe give a reason to why Final Fantasy characters exist in this universe, and why they may be missing for Kingdom Hearts 3 pre-DLC. Finally, sleeping worlds are just cycling through memories of the world, right? Just like Chain of Memories in Aroxas' Datascape, so maybe sleeping worlds are more closely related to data than we thought. Thanks again to Watercare Hedge for letting me talk a little bit about this really cool subject. If you want to hear me ramble more, my links are in the description. Thanks again. Wow, so I did not expect this to take as long as it did. Um, part of it was I was just kind of burnt out from the last couple videos I did, and just da this whole topic of datascapes is... It's hard to keep track of, like, what I want to talk about. Like, because I, I want to talk about the theory, right, that I'm kind of building up towards. Um which we kind of, I kind of do talk about that with Demo and Bio and Lunar in a Bio's podcast coming out Tuesday, which I don't know when I'm releasing this. It might be the same day. Um, so if you guys haven't seen that, I recommend going to watch that because that's kind of where my theory's heading. Um, but I didn't want to like include it in this because I was kind of just trying to get a video with uh, just kind of facts or more, or I guess not facts per se, but like, hard evidence um and in that video we talk about like the arc how in recoded re the riku who is jiminy's terminal is actually referenced as the arc and it's like okay so that kind of makes it clear that well not clear but more so clear that maybe the datascape is the arc kind of thing that the darkness is talking about anyway I feel like I rambled in this video a lot, so I'm going to try to keep this short. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. It took me a while to get together. Uh, thank you so much to Damo for helping me like talk it through. and uh, He actually helped me get some footage. Lunar did too, as well as Preferred Whale 6. Uh, Polo Geist, who is always awesome at getting me audio. Um, the music in the background that you hear is all from him. Uh, which, yeah, if you haven't checked him out, if you haven't checked anybody out that I just mentioned, definitely I'll leave their links below. They're great people. They're like really awesome to work with and really easy to work with. And Kimchi was just such a like Adobe art art god on this project. He helped me with the intro. Uh, like I made the Fallen Cubes or whatever in Blender, but like he headed up everything else. Like I gave him my idea and he like ran with it, did his own thing, like made it look freaking awesome. And then like the intro, like I needed some like After Effects help with like the tracking and stuff, and he was like oh yeah, you just do this, and like, like, got on call with me, walked me through it, just like, such a chill dude, so, so easy to work with, and yeah, it was, it was, it was good, great, and you can find him on Twitter, I'll put his link, uh, in the description as well, yeah, if you haven't subscribed to them, definitely subscribe to them, they're awesome, they have great content, 
Um, I love watching their stuff. That sounds really weird. <laughs> and if you haven't subscribed to me yet, that'd be awesome. I know this is like at the end, so like not a lot of people are going to see this, but this is, I, I want to, I feel weird asking people to like subscribe and stuff at like, if you heard me in the beginning of the video, I sound like super awkward and stuff. It's just, I, I'm not used to asking people to subscribe. Like, I feel like if you want to subscribe, then you can go ahead. But also looking at my analytics, there's a lot of people who do watch the video that don't subscribe. So I guess I should ask people to subscribe. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's weird. Um, anyway, uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed, um, caveats. Like I said, this was more of like a data collection video. So the stuff that I presented at the end, the theory, I feel like is pretty solidified. Um, obviously there are some caveats like you don't, and I, yeah, I feel like I kind of already mentioned in the video, so I don't feel like I need to retread that ground. Um, I might be doing like a post production, like talk either like just by myself talking th through after I watch it all and kind of stuff like that. Or I might talk with like demo or a bio or I don't know, we'll see, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, it was a lot of fun to make. I think there's a lot of good stuff in here um going forward i think i can build on that the next video will be dreamscapes or dreamscapes that's actually not a bad name for it uh i meant <laughs> uh sleeping world or sleeping worlds um which i think in my earlier video i called it dreaming worlds or dream worlds which i think they call it sleeping worlds in this game <sighs> i'm ranting i'm not making much sense We'll see how much stays in, I guess. <laughs>